It's been a hot second since I've opened up one of these boxes and uh, I happen to have one here. So I thought now was the perfect time to dig in. It's not the November box, it's the October box, but <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna dig in here. I'm gonna find out what's inside and hopefully we'll make something cool with it. Oh, yeah, it just occurred to me. <laughs> this is the October box, which means it's probably gonna have like ink in it. Yep, yep, yep. Fine liners. You can never have too many fine liners. I'm just saying, I'm not, that's not even sarcastic. They break, they get lost, they dry out. You always need more. This is King Art. Oh, pro. Ooh. <laughs> they have a 0.20 millimeter. What did I just say? A 0.2 millimeter, 0.25 millimeter, 0.3 millimeter, 0.35 millimeter, 0.45 millimeter, and 0.5 millimeter. You can see the nib are just it makes me happy that they get to enjoy the world even when the cap's on so they have the uh, size name right there on the cap and on the barrel as well i'm a fan of the white barrels to be honest a lot prettier than like a micron just saying just saying no hate here's the menu for the art smex plus so the items for the plus were these pens and uh, this paper down there which is the linux cotton paper pad by lesion paper nine by two whoa it's 25 dollars Oh, jeez, it's thick. I can imagine so. Well, there's 15 sheets, but look how thick it is. Ooh, do you hear that? You know something's expensive when they do this, like, embossed. Can I read this now? Designed to withstand both delicate and bold impressions, the sturdy substrate was our first 100% cotton paper to be produced by an American mill. With a soft textured finish, it's the ideal surface for graphite, pastel, colored pencil, and charcoal. This is Lennox Cotton. Oh, for some reason I thought that was like the brand name down here, but that's the paper type. <laughs> now you know. Anyway, sidetracked. We have a Dum Dum Pop in the flavor orange. Beautiful. We have the menu with the art snacks items and a joke. What did the angry painter do? They made a scene. <laughs> I tried to laugh. I tried, I tried. These items, these in this little box. Liquitex acrylic ink. <gasps> Iridescent rose gold. I like assumed it was gonna be black ink because it's like inktober. I need to just see what this looks like. Be beautiful, be beautiful. That's what I say every time I wake up and look in the mirror. Ooh, look at it, look at it. It's got so much like glitteries. Semi-opaque, not light fast, iridescent rose gold. Hmm, okay. And then finally, the last item, inside the box. Wait, Ooh, we have the sticker. It's got little skulls on it. Beautiful. And a purple eraser, morbid. There's these, the manga liner. It's got a tortoise and a hare on it. Extra fine, 0.7 to two millimeters. Is it right in this green color? Or does it write in the blue color? Oh, it's one of those paint pens, so you gotta like prep it. <gasps> there it is. Ooh, it's shiny. Well, that's like really shiny. Watch out, you gotta put on some sunglasses. Okay, I'm getting excited. How am I gonna use these together? We also have a paintbrush. It's a zero professional watercolor Windsor Newton, I think. Yep. I assume this is for using with our ink. We can do like really fine details like jewelry or something. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have a pencil. It's a B pencil, so it's gonna be pretty soft. It's by Mistubishi. I'm gonna sharpen it though. This sounds like a job for Hello Kitty. Now that's sharp. Should we draw in this, do you think? Or my sketchbook? I'm gonna use this first page as our like brainstorming page. I normally use my sketchbook, but I kind of just want to get a feel for this paper. It's usually smart to swatch and create thumbnails on the paper you plan on using because you can see how the colors will look because colors can look different on different kinds of paper. I wonder what markers would look like on this. It didn't say markers, did it? Graphite, pastel, colored pencils, and charcoal. So I'd actually be interested to see what markers do on it, but it sounds like the professionals do not encourage markers. <laughs> but yes, we have a pencil. I'll draw a little skull. That's a very bold. That's a B pencil, all right? It's gonna be very difficult to erase. So let's just not just build up instead of erasing. You know what would be kind of cool? Like some kind of flowers. You could add like a shadow underneath. Maybe some kind of like viney thing. Rose. This could be an interesting idea. I forget what that's called to draw. There's a word for that in like art. Would you include a skull? It's a reminder of death or whatnot as the like final goal. You know, there's something like that. But I really like the idea of lots of shadows. Cause I could use the line art for that too. Hey, this would actually work because I have like this. Except it's metallic, but you could do like leafy things with this. And then we would have this color maybe for the roses. I need to grab one of my little plastic lady. That way I'm not like dipping, dipping, dipping into the acrylic. 
It's so pretty. It's a very fall color, so it's kind of perfect. I want a bigger paintbrush, but we're just testing. And we'd have like some kind of roses. Should I try and keep it? Oh yeah, this is gonna be a really fine point. Just kind of build up a rose of some kind. Okay, it's not as metallic as the green one, but it's got like that pearlescent. Is that what it was called? Iridescence. <laughs> I don't like the way it looks on top of the pencil, actually. I'm gonna do some kind of like little berries. Oh, you know what I need? I need to get some water. Because if this dries, my brush will turn into a, a very crunchy brush, let's just say. I'm back with the H2O. I might also grab a larger brush from my own stash if we end up drawing this bigger because that might just take a little while to use this little guy. That sounds more like torture than fun. I kind of do want to just recreate that a little bit. So like create a shape and just fill it with skulls that are kind of squished together. How did they do this? Some of them are very squashed. This is harder than it looks. <laughs> Look at that one. Now that's how it's done. Can I fit a little one here? I think the less like black I have between them, the better it kind of looks because they look more clustered. It's a big one. It's a little uh, bug skeleton. Feels like a little squashed one. Got a little empty towards the side after I was like, it looks better when there's less black space between them. And then I end up doing even more. Funny how that works out. I'm gonna make one gold skull dish one. And that thing up at the top should be dry by now so I can try out layering the different supplies and see if they work that way before moving on to our final idea. I should look that up. What's it called when you paint skulls? A vanitas. is a symbolic work of art showing the transience of life, the futility of pleasure, and the certainty of death. Vanitas. It was a thing, it was a thing. I'm gonna use one of these thicker. Draw a nice skull. Ooh, I can see this paper kind of like can eat away at the paper when I try to layer it. I think it's because it's textured. And now I'm getting like pieces of the paper stuck to the end of my nib. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> you know what I think I'm doing wrong? Is that they wouldn't possibly be able to stand on just the teeth. It would fall backwards onto the back of the skull. That might be a good idea. Also, I feel like we should have some kind of flower sticking out of the eyeball if we decide to go with this. Eh, more like this. Give it a little shadow. <laughs> oh, I didn't even draw the flowers. <laughs> Start with a little vine and a rose with some leaves and some more flowers. And something on the side, I think. Here's my little Vanitas. Very simple. Oh, I wanted to try it with marker just to see. I don't know what this color is. I'm gonna draw a different skull for it. There we go. See, that one is like leaning backwards. Okay, so it looks like it kind of bleeds out. So this paper's definitely not for markers. It also doesn't seem to like to be layered too much with the fine liners, which I'm kind of surprised about because they came in the same box. All right, I love the like sketchiness of this one with like the circle used to like create the skull. I'm just a fan of that. But I also prefer the line art look because it's just so clean and like that contrast between the white paper and the black line art. Mwah. But then how do I mix in our metallic-y stuff? How did I end up picking marker color that is so similar to our ink? Hey, give it a little shading. Huh? I kind of like all the different variations. They all have something I like. I include like weeds in here. Kind of like fill in that space. Some of it can kind of overlap a skull or two. Huh? 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 What do you think? What if I draw a queen holding a skull? Hmm? Do a nice luxurious big poofy sleeves. She's very rich. She's having a portrait taken after all. I don't think my time period's right here with this headpiece, but it just feels right. I never hold a skull, why not? Maybe it's her uh, dead husband. Going very like reverse Henry VIII. <laughs> oh, do I give her seven skulls? Wait, no, he only had six wives. Six skulls. Not sure where. There's always a curtain. Then we can use a lot of like dark space back here to really push them forward. Make their silhouette kind of stand out. Queen Henrietta VIII, eh? <laughs> I feel like she should be standing though. I think that shows more authority than sitting. I'm kind of thinking of that portrait of Henry VIII. I think we should include six skulls. She's a bit more ruthless than her male counterpart. She just had them all killed when she got bored of them. <laughs> this is so morbid. A little skull down here. 
Or maybe she was just a terrible queen and this is actually propaganda. But I like to think that she commissioned this portrait. Because she had that kind of sense of humor. I don't know. Part of me hates it and part of me loves it. It's a little weirded out myself. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's all of them. I'll see these roses and stuff. Build this up even further back. An interesting concept. I could probably use like this stuff for like little dainty sort of accents, which are gonna make her look way more regal, I think. It's a jewelry. It's reminding me of something else I drew. I think I ended up using line art and like something metallic on that too. And it was like a couple princesses or something. And it was just line art. Little beads. Almost fill in the whole skirt with this. Ooh. Kind of throwing this everywhere now because I really like the way it looks. I think it just looks like such a regal fabric. And the roses. Throwing a lot of this on now. I like it even better. Oh, have I really used this this much? It's dull. Well, it's a B pencil. It's softer than what I'm used to. Kind of like figuring out if this makes sense and whatnot. And those little fabric -y bits, whatever they're called. Need a few more skulls here. I feel like this worked really well, the like diagonal thing with the beads on the crosses. I do like the concept. I'm just not entirely sure how to implement it. I might take this guy, kind of lightly erase it. Ooh, the paper's so soft, it like really dug in there. I was thinking, what if I use like a sort of off-white color? I know this paper's not great for this, but not that color, sorry. That's worse. Okay, too dark. I want it to like look different from this, you know? <laughs> That's probably what I was looking for. I also need a bigger paintbrush. Grab some of that. Fill in the skirt. A smaller one for the details. Like these little strips, whatever they are. It's the diagonal pattern. Some line art on top, maybe? One of the finer ones. I'm just gonna go over top of it all, and then we can go redo the dots. Oh, and I'm missing. <laughs> Whatever. It's a concept. It's a concept. Let's a little line art. Angry eyebrows. Hmm? Skulls back here. Okay, there's, there's the idea. All right, so there's... Do I want to, like, go further with this? Like, it's fun, but I'm just nervous. I also haven't used any of the green stuff. We could probably have little accents, maybe. Or little planties. I promise it's, like, metallic, you know? I think just as the accents on the dress, it works. But then I feel like I have to color the whole thing, because, like, she's basically colored. What do I do for skin? England, she should be pretty pale. We can add a little blush. And maybe something that's like basically white. Here, I have pinkish white. That's kind of dark. <laughs> oops, oops, oops. I do like Posca pen on top. Lighten that up. It makes it a little bit less pink. Hmm, what would her face? Maybe I'm stalling. I like to think that she put them all on trial and everything. So her kingdom obviously loves their beloved queen <laughs> and thinks all of the deaths were completely justified. But she's also the judge, jury, and executioner here, so you never know. She's pretty evil, but she's got to look kind of innocent, you know. Wait, is this one they didn't have eyebrows? I'm kind of making up the era a little bit. It's a little inspired, but also it's my own thing. I say so that I don't have to look up references in case I don't. <laughs> Give more life to this face. Maybe no eyebrows? That look great. Redraw it. Ooh, that kind of works. Okay, maybe use this. Would there be some kind of crown? I guess he's not wearing a crown. Probably take inspiration from this. He's got like a sash going across his tear with jewels and whatnot. Oh yeah, now does that look regal or what? Basically just like the more details I could probably pop on there, the more expensive the gown should look. He's starting to become a more fleshed out character. See, that's what gets me excited. Woo -hoo. I'm really happy with kind of the character design and idea, I guess. I really like the way this looks. And it fills up a lot of space very quickly and looks expensive. And I can put it in the hair! So really just use the green as accents on everything so it doesn't look too out of place, but also doesn't look too overwhelming. 
Ooh, it looks really nice next to the green, doesn't it? Seems like a plan. I feel like I could go ahead and make a finished version. Don't mind me, I'm just stalling. I kinda wanted to have pretty like pointy features. Like very elegant and like mature, I guess. I don't know. Thinking from like a character design point of view. I actually do not know what these would look like from the side. I don't think I've ever seen what this thing looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely stalling because I don't want to do what I think I have to do to kind of like cap off the video, you know? Do some lines on the face that'll also make her look a little older. So I, yeah, I've got an idea. What I'm thinking is I'm not gonna use a whole sheet of paper though. Cause I think the line art, like the nibs on a fine liner just ain't sturdy enough. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut this in half. Let's say 9 by 12. We'll just cut that in half. My best not to cut the paper underneath of it. Is this an idea? Line up our little line. Grab my knife. <gasps> Success. Almost. Wait. Success. And we have another attempt if I completely fail. I definitely want this same pose. I'm thinking this one. Don't know if I should use a different pencil though. This one is so heavy. Maybe an HB pencil. All right, so we need our character. I guess we want to be able to see her feet. Oh, I guess I need to move her over if I'm gonna ever hold a skull. Already off we wonderful start. Move her head over, looking up at the skull. Angry like. Powerful, that's what I mean. That's weird headpiece. <laughs> skull. May or may not stay there. Chest. Hands on hips, other hands up here. Nice big huge poofy sleeves, just like Henry VIII. And then he had the like jewelry thing. I guess you'd call it a necklace, I don't know. Try to make your face just pointier than I normally do. I, I'm very guilty of drawing very round, soft faces. I wanted to seem a bit more stern. Figure out where the legs would be. Let me look back at the... Okay, he doesn't have his leg up. He's just standing there. Hm. Well, I was wrong. But we want her crushing the skulls of her exes. Neckline. Probably a lower waist. This cool pattern that I decided was cool. Beaded fabric. I don't want it to continue up here too. She needs to hold this. Necklace. Another necklace. Put a little more effort into the face. Thin lips. Keep this on because it's beautiful and I like it. I just want to have it near me. Curtain. Back here. I could put another curtain on the other side, I suppose. Maybe it's open, like it's not, you know, tied. <laughs> Maybe a little table. That seems like something that would be in a portrait. Big expensive table. I think I'm gonna remove this table, or at least redraw it. But what we could also have is like a table, but it has like a fabric on it. <laughs> Do I trust my fabric drawing skills? And then we got skulls. One could go on like underneath this, like behind the curtain. It would kind of be in shadow one over so I can fit two. Hmm, there's two. Then we have these guys. French wrap fingers for the win. I think I'm gonna go no belts. I was unsure if that was possible, but it might happen. I feel like it needs something, but maybe just make it the same as this thing. <laughs> Make sure it's like folding to the shape of the actual body instead of just circles. I think that helps too. And then I'm gonna have all that dots on there. So I think it should work. All right, I think it's time. I guess we're going no flowers. And honestly, I don't really feel like drawing them anyway. So probably for the best, I wouldn't want to draw lazy flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna take this kneaded eraser. Am I gonna lightly remove the sketch? Okay, which one should I use here? 0.5, probably start there. Maybe do this skull that I really like. I really like this guy. Of my cloth drawing skills. <laughs> They've been worse. They've been worse. And there's another skull. Oh, okay, that's five. That's five skulls. Okay, then we have this curtain back here. Cool thing about curtains is they don't need to be straight. You can give them a little wiggle and they're actually gonna look more believably curtain like. Alright, we need to do her. Should I can move to a smaller line art maybe? Is there a three? Three is the next one down. 
trying not to do go heavy on the eyeliner. It's supposed to be like the 14th century or the 15th century. Again, don't really know. <laughs> the late 1400s to early 1500s. Glad this thing hasn't come back in style. <laughs> Can't say I'm a huge fan. I think I'll switch to the larger one. This one's not quite giving it the same style. That's better. This is something I saw in the portrait. There's so many lines going on here. It's hard to see. Big pumpkin sleeves. How's that for a hand? You know what? I didn't leave space for this belt. <laughs> this skull up here. Oh, doggy, you're fine. Ooh, that's a good hand. Oh, I'm happy with that. Wow. Here we go. So that's it for the liner. I think I'll just take the largest one. Kind of just fill in some gaps to kind of like add line variation. A little extra pizzazz. Also, I can probably erase all the pencil now. I'm actually thinking for this I want to use the pencil because when I did it with liner, I feel like it's just too exaggerated. Whereas I feel like with the pencil it might look better. So we'll just, we'll see what happens. If I can get a good enough picture of this, I'll share the liner. So if you feel like coloring it, you can do that. Be right back. Okay. All right, step one, grab eggshell and fill in all of the yellow parts that I decided. In that thumbnail, if you can even call that a thumbnail, it's a pretty big sketch. <laughs> Like a little bit of green on the end of this. Oh, you know what it is? It's probably this. <laughs> hey, fun, fun. I don't need to be too careful about staying in the lines, which is good because it seems to bleed on this paper. Because we have an opaque art supply that's going over the top. Very handy. Open this sleeve. It does look pretty nice though. I mean, it's a very pastel color, so it's usually easy to fudge. <laughs> This will be the uh, test though. This is a really large area there. Now you're seeing the streaks. Uh-oh, is this even got any juice in it? Come on, baby. Luckily, there'll be a texture on top. It'll hide some of this. That should be good enough, right? Paper's also probably really absorbing it. Anything else that needs to be the color? I don't think so. I think we good. I do need to come up with some kind of skin tone. The one I picked originally was too dark because I'm pretty sure if we're going for like a sort of era here, this is around the time, actually right before Queen Elizabeth made it popular to wear lead on your face, which just makes you very white. So I need a very light color. It's slightly darker than the color I use, so I'm kind of just creating some dimension. Probably need that here too. So it's more of a yellowy color, but I'm sure we'll go over this with both of those <laughs> metallic colors. So I want to add a little shading to the skulls. I think I'd want something lighter than that. Although it looks nice. So that's neutral gray too. I have neutral gray zero. Get a little shading. Oh, and this guy up here. Mm, oh, I think this should probably just color that in. What about this? I have evening primrose. That sounds like skin tone Queen Elizabeth would be looking for. Maybe I'll just do a little blush with it, like around the knuckles, but leave her skin white to just kind of give the illusion of a skin tone. Honestly, it's not bad. I could probably go over the whole thing with this. I might. Here we go. Bring a little red warmth to the skin. I don't think I could get much paler than that. That almost looks white. I Maybe I should color in the curtains. Maybe that color I had, this one. Does that look right next to this? Get a kind of deep brown color. Thinking about it. It's just a very juicy marker, so it seems ideal to fill in such a large area. <gasps> you know what I could do? So if this is curtain, oh, large areas are still kind of difficult, but this is my curtain. I could go over with like this. Draw like these sort of things. So you know they're expensive curtains. I don't know, something floral maybe. It's an idea, but we'll figure it out when we get there. Now since it is like a curtain, nice long strokes might be useful. Kind of create that fabric illusion. Just so it kind of looks like it's kind of folding over itself. Nice. So to fill in this last section of curtain, I'm gonna continue that like flow of the curtain for our streaks. Cause if it's gonna be streaky, you might as well use it to your advantage to further the idea of whatever you're drawing. Like I like to think of that when I'm doing hair or something, like follow the flow of hair. So far so good. Usually by now I'm already like, really should not have colored this, but I haven't felt that way yet. Now do I wanna do pencil on this? 
Yeah, I think that looks nice. It's like gray, but you make do. <laughs> should I continue into this or should I do a different design on that? We could maybe just use it here. Oh, and then I wanted it here. Okay, I'm gonna use this Oh black maca color in the hair. <gasps> no, I can't because I was gonna fill this back area black. Well, I guess I'm gonna add stuff to it. Maybe I'll just have to color in the back with something else. I also need color for this. I kind of want this to be less saturated, so maybe I'll go over it with gray or the opposite of whatever it is. I'll go over it with like a pastel blue or green if it's more yellow. I'll try the gray trick first. It's a little simpler. You look moldy or something. Try a blue green. I just want to kind of tone it down. It's just looking more moldy. <laughs> never mind, never mind. I think that's it for markers. I have to figure out the background, but the background shouldn't have really any acrylic too close to it, I don't think. Grab some more of this paint. Mm, stir it up. Okay, and then I need a bigger paintbrush. And I just start filling in whatever I can that is dress. Again, I can kind of keep in mind the flow of the fabric for any streaks. Might need this smaller paintbrush that came with us. Ooh, I love filling in that little detail though. Right there. Ooh, that looked cool. Whoa, not a whole lot of talking to be done. <laughs> because it does stress me out a bit. Switch over to this guy. Start globbing larger areas again. Definitely seems to dry more solid than it looks when it's wet. Because that looks really good now. And before, I think it looked more like this. Spread out the globs though. Don't want to take any chances. Now I need the smaller one. Add in the little dots. Ooh, I love the way this looks. Isn't that just... Also, I think I want to change this to the same size as that. It's going to be more dainty. Just want to keep it kind of small. There we go. It's more like quilted fabric. Now let's add in our little dots. Start at the top. Don't miss a cross section. Boop, beep, boop. Alrighty. I think that does it for that. The skull got a little marooned. I want this color. For these ropes. Now this is supposed to be wood. Maybe I'll use this. Fill that in. I think I need a little bit of this. Okay. Next up is green. Make sure it's nice and prep. I think I want green all around here. Make it look like it belongs. I'm thinking maybe I'll just give a design at the bottom of the drapes. Maybe have it near the top as well, I'm not sure. I'm just adding as many little details as possible. Make it look like a more expensive garment. I think that works. Maybe just leave a little white border around it if I feel like coloring in the back. I'm gonna start by using that wood color. Kind of color in behind her. Cause I can always make it darker. Yeah, I think it needs to be less saturated. Maybe cashew or copper. It's a bit more red. That might work. Otherwise, it's cashew, which I also like. Hmm. We use copper for the floor and cashew for the backdrop. Maybe even a little shading. I might use this around the hair and then blend it into the cashew color just to make the hair stand out a bit more. Wow, this is gonna make her look even paler next to this. You can't even see the pink anymore. Might use that pink color on her skin and go over it again. Color in the floor with her cashew. Mm -hmm. It looks like she's on stage performing. I think if I'd filled the background with more things, could have avoided that. Maybe the artist left the background empty to symbolize the emptiness of her heart because she had zero friends because she's such a terrible person. <laughs> yeah. Don't cross her path. <laughs> I'm gonna take some of this and color over the rope. It stands out too much. I could add like diamonds. Mm, okay, I think that'll do it. I think I'm gonna call it. I know I like fought myself to even make this drawing, but I'm happy with it. And I'm happy with this stuff too. I also kind of like this. So yes, that was the October Art Snacks box. I'll have links in the description if you're wondering about anything. Would you like a close up? Here it is. Look at her. The queen of England. Well, maybe a made up place. <laughs> the queen of landing. It's spelled with an E, not an I. Landing. Do you get it? Isn't the metallic stuff so cool? You can kind of see how patchy the paint is now. But just the texture, it's so fun. I like it. I like it.
like it. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.